when the backdoor flush draw comes in, you definitely want to go for a value bet. The question here is, do you want to have multiple river bet sizes, or are we just going to have a big bet size and then check back a lot of marginal made hands? Hello, Sharks. I am Jonathan Little for PokerNews.com, here today with an exciting hand from a $25,000 high roller tournament that took place at Rob Young's Dusk Till Dawn. Let's get right to it. 39 years young. Everyone else is such a baby. In this hand, to start it off, Rainer Kempe, very, very strong, world-class player, raises it up from the hijack seat. They are playing 5,000, 10,000 with a 10,000 big blind ante. Rainer has about 75 big blinds to start. He has a lot of tournament caches, $21 million. He's won 17 major live poker tournaments and cashed in 159. So even though he's a young guy, he is an absolute crusher. That has him winning nearly 10% of the tournaments that he cashes in. He knows how to get it done. He raises it up. Then it folds around to Kristen Bicknell in the big blind. She has about $5 million in live tournament earnings, three World Series of Poker bracelets, and she has won the Global Poker Index Female Player of the Year Award for the last three years, 2017, 18, and 19. They did not have Player of the Year in 2020 because of COVID, but you know, if she was out there grinding, I'm sure she probably would have won it again. She's an absolute crusher, one of the best poker players in the world, and she has King Queen of Diamonds in the big blind. She likes to call. Kemp opens with the King 10 out of the hijack. Bicknell makes the call in the big blind with the King Queen of Diamonds and flops a queen. Got shot for Kemp. Kristen checks. Rainer bets 45,000, which is eh, a little bit big, but whenever you are playing deep stacked, it's perfectly fine to bet bigger on these somewhat coordinated boards. And over to Kristen, and she has an interesting decision right off the bat. Um, if we were playing shallower stacked, where Kristen's just really happy getting it in with top pair, second kicker, then check raising certainly becomes reasonable. You're going to find that you typically want to check raise your best top pairs, whatever those are in your range. And King Queen's probably it in this scenario because she would often re raise Ace Queen before the flop. That said, when you are playing very deep stacked, you have to be a little bit more cautious. And for that reason, calling here is certainly fine, especially when Rainer bets 45,000. If Rainer bets smaller, like let's say 25,000, then raising has a bit more merit. Whenever you are in the spot, you don't want to just snap call, because if you just snap call, they're like, oh, we clearly have something good, right? You want to make it look like you're perhaps floating with ace high with a back door time. draw. Yeah, decision time. Typically, we see a lot of just check calls in this situation. However, I have noticed trends sort of shifting to where we have a hand like king-queen on that texture. The check raise is mm -hmm. incoming. Kristen elects to go with the sort of the bluff catch, conservative approach, check call. Let's see what develops. Jack 10 now gets there. Reiner having a 10 in his hand. Certainly a candidate to maybe consider two barreling, although it looks pretty clear to me like Kristen has a queen. So um, I agree with everything Brent said there. Like I said, though, top pair usually goes for the check raises more often as you are shallower. So now, Reiner has an interesting decision on the turn with his gut shot straight draw, over card, king of clubs. This is a spot where he has to decide if he should bluff. And... Fortunately for you, you don't have to guess. I have a bluffing quiz for you. It's completely free to take. Go to pokercoaching.com slash bluffing quiz that will take you through a bunch of situations kind of like this where you have to figure out if you should bluff with your hand or if you should just check it, looking to give up. And this is a situation where with just king high, with a gut shot straight draw, it's a pretty reasonable spot to go for the bluff. If you think about Rainer's range, he doesn't actually have a ton of logical bluffs here. If he had something like Ace-10 or Ace-Jack, he should probably be a little bit less inclined to bluff those because those do win at the showdown sometimes. So in this scenario, Rainer's going to want to bet with some gut shot straight draws, and he's going to want to bet with some backdoor flush draws, in addition to his best hands. If he had a good queen or better, probably like king-queen or better, he would want to value bet. Obviously, you know, ace-queen, pocket aces... Jack-10, all of those hands want to bet as well. And since there are a lot of hands in Rainer's range that want to value bet, he also gets to bluff a lot of the time. So this is a nice spot to go for a reasonably sized bluff. When the um, board is relatively draw heavy, like it is here, typically you're going to want to bet on the bigger side. Pot's 155. Let's see what Rainer does. 
a lot of the time. Certainly she does have a nine some of the time. Could we elect to fire two shells to try and get a nine to fold out? Or a four? King or of Clubs sixes. also kind of a fun card for Reiner if he wants to try and represent a backdoor flush draw. If we were to bet two shells here. There we go. Pot was 155. He does go 115. As you see, he uses the bigger size. And now once it gets back to Kristen, she just has an easy call because now if she check raises the turn, she's mostly going to get it in against hands that beat hers. So while King Queen was uh, perhaps a check raise on the flop, once you make it to the turn, you are definitely check calling it. Bell is for 115,000. Again, designed to fold out a nine. I would venture to say a nine's probably not going to fold right here, but a nine will fold on the river. This turn bet will get a side to fold, which is good for Rainer. Um, a four to fold, which is good for Rainer. A hand like pocket six is a fold, which is good for Rainer. And um, that's probably about it. I think if Kristen does have a nine or better, she's probably going to continue the majority of the time here. Notice a lot of nines actually have um, a gut shot straight draw or an overcard, so they have a little bit of extra equity. And a queen's just never folding. Queen doesn't really love it, but I don't think we're going anywhere if we're Chrissy B here with King Queen. She will check call again. Pots 385,000. Keep that in mind. Use the clubs on the river. With 566 that flush that has appeared and now. All right. Kristen checks. Now, we have a decision point if we are in Rainer's shoes. What I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and type in the comment section below if in Rainer's shoes you would check it and give up, if you would bet small, like let's say a third pot, would you bet big, like let's say three-fourths pot, or would you jam it all in for about 1.5 times the size of the pot? Commit to your answer, write it in the comment section below. I'll be right back to give you my thoughts on it. All right, this is a dicey, dicey, dicey scenario. And I think it's pretty mandatory that Rainer goes for the bluff in this scenario. When the backdoor flush draw comes in, you definitely want to go for a value bet. The question here is, do you want to have multiple river bet sizes, or are we just going to have a big bet size and then check back a lot of marginal made hands? So in this spot, you want to ask, is a hand like ace-queen good enough to value bet? And if I make a giant bet with ace-queen, can my opponent call with worse? And I think the answer is very clearly no in this spot. So we are going to want to have at least two bet sizes when we're trying to develop a somewhat implementable strategy. I actually discussed implement implementable strategies a ton at my training site, pokercoaching.com. We're actually having a St. Patrick's Day sale. It is the last day of the sale. You can sign up at pokercoaching.com slash patties. Get in there and get a big discount on pokercoaching.com. In this spot, I think Kristen's range is going to be a whole lot of flushes that are never going to fold, but Rainer has the king of clubs blocking some of those, so those aren't such a major concern. She's going to have a whole lot of um, queen x, and then she's going to have some hands worse than a queen, like um, ace-nine type hands, right? So this is a spot where we do want to have two bet sizes. And the question is, do we want to use king-10 in a big bet size or a small bet size range? And if you look at the solver, very often it'll just mix these up and it's, it's kind of difficult to know what to do. What I do, though, personally, is when I'm in a situation like this, I'm going to use my lower showdown value hands in my big bet size, especially if they have a blocker to the super nut hands. And King of Clubs lacks showdown value, and it has a very relevant blocker. So this is a hand I think I'm gonna use for a big bet size. Do we want to have an all-in bet size here? Eh, I don't know. Um, if we were playing a cash game, the answer is certainly yes, but I think in tournaments you should shy away from using gigantic bet sizes just in general. Um, that said, it could be fine in this scenario. We are playing the early levels of a $25,000 tournament where you can re-enter, so it's kind of like a cash game, right? Um, so in this scenario, I'm going to use this king high as a big bluff, I think. Pots 385, we're trying to get a queen to fold, right? So how much will it take to get a queen to fold? Um, a pretty big bet, like three-fourths pot, maybe even all-in. I think that is 
very, very viable in this scenario. Um, when I'm going to use a small bet size as a bluff, I'm probably going to be using my random pocket pairs. Like if I decided to double barrel pocket threes or a hand like five, four, those are hands that I'm going to consider betting small with. And you may say, why bet small with five, four? Because sometimes when you bet small, your opponent will sporadically hero call you with the ace high, which is nice. And whenever you bet small with a hand like king high and your opponent sporadically calls you with ace high, you still lose, right? Um, maybe if he had a hand like ace two of diamonds that decided to keep bluffing, maybe that's a hand that you would want to bet small with as a bluff. And you got to realize when we are betting small in this scenario, we are trying to get like pocket fives to fold, right? Because at this point, we have to realize that a hand like a two or a four or pocket threes probably isn't all that good. So even though it does have some quote unquote showdown value, it's not actually a lot. And Rainer definitely has a lot of hands that he would like to value at here. Aces, kings, ace, queen, king, queen, queen, nine, nine, eight, right? All these hands are quite strong, but I'm not sure they can go for a giant bet. So in this scenario, Rainer's going to want to be betting big with his absolute best hands like flushes and straights, and then some bluffs usually that lack showdown value with a blocker. And then he's going to want to be betting smaller with mostly a range of a few nut hands, plus good, strong top pair, over pair type hands in two pairs, plus um, a small sampling of bluffs, usually those that have a touch of showdown value, like a two or a four. That's what I would do. Solid implementable strategy. We discuss this thoroughly in my tournament masterclass at pokercoaching.com. Remember, get a big discount right now at pokercoaching.com slash patties. Let's see what Rainer likes to do. Rainer, so Rainer like ever continue firing three shells to try and represent that sort of holding. What does he do? 85,000 in the pot. Funny enough, pretty much no matter what size he bets here, Kristen's probably calling. Unless he goes all in, even then, <laughs> Kristen may just find the call. So this is the spot where he is doomed. How much pain is he going to inflict on himself? None? A little? A lot? Or all of it? I would love to see if you were to try and represent this thing, perhaps an overbet. It's got 566k oh, behind. Is. Brent Hanks got excited. He said, there it is. It's a bet. But Rainer actually went 195. So Rainer does go for the small river bet. He's only going to feel a little bit of pain. Um, I'd be interested to know, why, why pick the small size in here? I get the idea of using a small size if, as an exploitative play, you think Kristen never folds a queen, which should be a lot of a range. I'm sure Rainer's aware, aware of that. If she will never fold a queen to any bet, but she will always fold or mostly fold a nine or worse to this bet, then this is a great bet, right? Because it's, ne I mean, she's never folding a queen, right? So you want to lose the minimum against that. And if she's always or mostly folding a nine and worse to any bet, then a small bet makes a whole lot of sense. So this certainly could be the right bet in this scenario, but... <laughs> I don't think it's going to work. Let's see what happens. 195. Oh, no. Snap call. Immediate call. Make the call <laughs> with the queens. Easy, queen. Easy call there with the queen, and Kristen wins a sizable pot off of Rainer. Fun hand. That's going to be it for today. If you enjoyed this video, do me a quick favor. Click the like and subscribe buttons below and the notification bell. Ding, ding, ding. Good luck in your games. Have a great, great week. And if you have a little bit of time, stick around. Watch more videos here on my YouTube channel.